Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to Friday Night. Earthmaster here on this end, 10.56 p.m. California time, November 8th, 2024 is the date. Uh, a little bit of activity here filling in across the Aleutian Trench since this morning's update. Of course, we've seen a lot of earthquake activity here through the Curl Cam Chatka, all the way across the Aleutian Trench, even up into Canada earlier this morning. So things are starting to fill in there uh, accordingly. Uh, also, some newer movement activity here across the Izu Trench northward. Uh, this is uh, just prior to the Izu Trench subduction zone. Down here in the south, we've seen a swarm of earthquake activity uh, with really no main movement, just a swarm of moderate earthquakes. Getting some adjustment here across the north, so I still think we are likely to see some larger scale activity out here across the area, potentially even here on the western, northwestern side of the Filipino plate. Uh, some earthquake activity there underneath the Japan area into the Japan Trench as well from this evening. 4.4 4 at 42 miles deep there for that earthquake. As far as California activity goes, I've got the Bay Area lighting up here in the last hour around Mount Diablo, 1.5 and a 1.3 earthquake. As far as the 2.5 map and above, well, it looks like uh, some movement outside of Susanville again this evening with a 2.7 earthquake. This is another area that has been seeing a, a little bit of interesting earthquake activity here. I, I believe this is just general stress out here against the Sierra Nevada mountains. There is another or a handful of uh, uh, fault systems out here. So this is an overall sign of just strain out here in the area. Uh, that along with some movement underneath the underneath the Lake Albanor area as well indicative of the strain that's being produced out here across Northern California here in the last 30 days. Um, nothing going on across the Long Valley supervolcano. Southern California here, a handful of smaller quakes, really nothing major. Uh, one earthquake out here in the Newport Inglewood fault. That's all we need is to get that thing going. Um, 1.3 just a couple hours ago. Nothing major going on out here for now. Just general microquake activity across the region. Look at this swarm of movement stirring up all the way up into Montana. But you can follow here on the uh, map, the topography of the map here, the mountain ranges that extend from Montana all the way down through Yellowstone, uh, Utah. And a lot of times this will fill in right here across this area uh, in terms of earthquake activity and make a pretty much a half circle out here of seismic activity. And, of course, that is just a, uh, a general idea here that that could be uh, related to the strain out here across the west coast even inland here across the area a north american plate almost always underneath pressure and when there's more pressure out here across the area obviously we'll see more inland earthquake activity and of course the oil fields tend to get hit heavily as well when we see elevated strain out here across the west coast uh, let me see what we got for the trimmer map here tonight see what we have Make sure everything's good. Bells are off. Uh, trimmer, 202 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, most of it, well, looks like a little bit down south here, a little bit up north. This is the extreme southern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, so we'll watch for some further potential escalated activity out here across the southern end. This has been a hot spot of earthquake activity here recently, including a couple earthquakes there right around the uh, Cascadia uh, fold and thrust belt and also one back prior to the subduction zone so things are uh, I mean, you know they're doing their plate tectonic thing out here strain building up uh, Oklahoma area Texas oil fields getting hit nothing major going on one earthquake out in the New Jersey area this is the area that's seen some earthquake activity earlier this year some felt earthquakes there and a swarm of earthquake activity following that event but for now, a little 1.5 out there. So most of the movement, obviously, uh, across the northern edge here of the uh, Pacific Plate. Some newer adjustment taking place here across the Japan area southward. And it looks like we got some newer uh, renewed activity here across the uh, Philippines area southward as well. Uh, New Zealand down here, they've been having a little bit of swarming activity. Let me see here. Let me bring this up and show you guys the movement. Uh, a handful of earthquakes. Well, I don't even know if this map's going to show it or not. I think I have to go here to the uh, EMSC model and check it out. 
if it's going to be working tonight, let's take a look here and see. But uh, this activity is, well, it looks like, uh, yeah, it's been over the last two days, it looks like, 24 hours, one hour. A little bit of movement out here in a linear fashion. That's actually rather interesting here because uh, it's just leading off here into the Pacific, whether you want to look at it leading away from this area or maybe leading towards this area. And, of course, those ridges out here, are the result of a major subduction zone that sits out there called the Hikurangi subduction zone. And that's capable of producing a mega quake. And of course, they've had various um, underwater landslides out there as well. Uh, definitely not what you want to see out here, but uh, it looks like, let's see here. There's a four pointer, 3.6. See, these aren't even really microquakes. These are a little bit above that level and uh another 3.5 as well from today we'll continue to watch it i mean obviously it is a, a very tectonically active region new zealand is it's got numerous types of fault systems here across the plate boundary and uh, right now kind of pointing towards this area of new zealand we'll definitely watch that uh i didn't see a lot of earthquake activity there on the drums let's go see here real quick at least as far as local seismic activity goes, we could pick any number of these. There's a couple of the smaller quakes. Those look like distant quakes, so they're not local to this seismograph station here, but uh, more so um, offshore. I don't think it's that far offshore, but uh, anyway, uh, we'll definitely watch it. Uh, there's, you know, that's about all we can do right now. Uh, pretty much sits right about in this area. I think it's a little bit more closer to North Island than it is to the uh, Chatham Rise area. But uh, yeah, some interesting activity taking place there. Uh, let's see what else we got here for the uh, Earthquake 3D Globe. South America region, still seeing some twos and threes out there. Same for the Middle America Trench. Uh, definitely active. The Atlantic Ocean absent of earthquake activity here recently. Got the Mediterranean kicking back up. Bunch of earthquake activity out here today. From fours around Turkey, magnitude fours all the way over here across the, uh, looks like just outside the Italy area with the four pointer. And in between a swarm of earthquakes, nothing big, just a little bit of elevated seismic activity here in the last 24 hours. Expecting an eight pointer here, folks. I don't know where exactly yet, but uh, the average eight point, the 8.0 magnitude earthquakes there normally strike. Um, they can strike every year, if not every year, every other year. And our last eight pointer was back in 2021. So here we are, you know, three years coming up on maybe four years here soon where we haven't had an 8.0 earthquake out here. Um, so that should be, uh, should be coming up 8.0 or potentially larger out here. If you look at the average intervals of earthquakes, you know, between these magnitudes here, uh, we definitely should have seen an eight pointer out here. Uh, it could happen at any time. It could, could be California, it could be New Zealand, it could be uh, Japan subduction zone, it could be South America. It could happen anywhere. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, all right, space weather activity here. Not quite back to myself here, folks, but I'm I'm not coughing as much. I just still have a uh, a little weird feeling in my voice box that's affecting my tones. Good thing I'm not a singer. That would not be good. But still, I'm using my voice right here on the microphone, so i got to make sure I, I'm able to speak here. Uh, and the mic is not cutting out. Someone mentioned here that it sounds like the audio is cutting out. That's actually my voice cracking if I go for the higher notes. Um, a little bit of uh, Aurora activity right now coming up out of the blue. I don't think it was forecasted. They just recently added a G1 class storm on here. It wasn't forecasted. They did this following the arrival of some elevated aurora activity. Uh, so if you're out there across the northern re regions here, could see some roars. And I think that's mainly due to a couple of coronal holes that have been facing the Earth and the tilt here of the BZ a component there of the interplanetary magnetic field that has allowed for the storming conditions here to uh, be somewhat elevated. Uh, but yeah, that wasn't really called for here. 
Um, no major storms there in the forecast. We do have a number of sunspots out here. And let's take a look here at the uh, sunspot region that's currently facing the Earth. This one here looks like it's done for. We're getting a huge mass of separation in that core. Same for this area. Back over here is about the only one of some significance in terms of value of solar flares. Uh, quite complex here within that sunspot area. And that's 3889. That's going to be the one to watch here for some stronger flaring as we do have a remaining X flare threat here at 35% 35, 35 chance. Here, see, I lost it. 85% uh, chance for the M flare. C flare around 99% chance. We'll continue to keep an eye on those. And as uh, far as what's coming around the bend on the far side of the sun, well, let's see here. There's 3889 on the eastern limb. That's the one I showed you guys. Even though it's here on the right side of the map, the sun is laid out on a flat scale model. So this is the earth facing side with the eastern limb technically over here, but it's split uh, the way it's laid out here. So this is the far side of the sun. Um, I don't see anything major coming right now, uh, but that doesn't mean we're not going to see some newer sunspots here pop up from uh, the area once it comes into earth directed view but uh, for now keep an eye there on 3889 that does uh, look fairly um, impressive for some x flare activity um, national hurricane center see what we have here for any hurricane activity on this friday night Raphael spinning out there but also weakening at the same time it is expected to weaken further here uh, across the gulf area gulf of mexico and eventually, they're still showing, taking a, a little southern turn here, uh, even weakening further into a tropical depression. No threat to land. And now the GFS model here shows it uh, down here in the Gulf of Mexico, potentially pulling up uh, or losing some of its steam from this low pressure that's tapping into that moisture. Let's put this into motion here and see what it's uh, given us. Yeah, it looks like it, it just gets shredded away. The area of circulation still remains here in the Gulf, and I guess that's where it's going to dissipate. And um, yeah, so really no major threat there to the Gulf Coast states. California getting some broken up storms out here, but we're going to be dealing with some cooler weather, some snow um, there in the mountains. And I guess we'll have to see uh, what happens here. I'm kind of curious to see how this system plays out in the Northeast. That looks like a massive low pressure northeast nor'easter type storm could bring a bunch of snow out there across the area. Uh, we'll check that out as we get a little bit closer. That's just a massive, extremely low area of, of um, low pressure right there. 974 MB. That's crazy. So that could be a rather strong low pressure system with a lot of snow, depending on how much moisture it has to tap into here. All right, folks, I'm out of here Friday night. Going to call it a night. Um, we'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Please stay safe out there and um, appreciate all the kind thoughts and the words here on uh, w the wishes there for uh, better health. I mean, I, I never get sick out here, hardly ever. Uh, but this one's been lingering about eight days now. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's uh, I've tried a number of different home remedies. I might try some garlic. Someone mentioned the, here on the comments here to try some garlic. Uh, and that's something I haven't tried yet. I may try it though and see if that helps out. Either way, I'm getting better slowly but surely. I appreciate the uh, the positive vibes coming in here. We'll catch you guys out here in the morning for the uh, Saturday morning update. Stay safe out there, folks. Have a good night.